And here we have the graceful swing of Hollis Stacy. Get used to it, because you're going to see it again. She seems bound to become one of the game's dominant figures. My sisters and I, during the summer months, would go to the Savannah Golf Club and swim all day. Savannah Golf Club had a brick fence that you could peer through, and the practice putting green would be adjacent to the swimming area. And there were so many days that I would just go look to see where my big sis was, and there would be Hollis chipping and putting for hours. I never understood why she was doing it for so long. If I make this putt, I will win the girls' junior, or if I make this one, I'll win the women's open. National Championship Golf is nothing new to this girl. Here she was in 1969, age 15, winning the USGA Girls Junior Championship for the first time. She did it again in 1970 and 1971 as well. Growing up with Hollis, we always knew it was a big deal. I can remember Sports Illustrated coming to the house. I remember Curry Kirkpatrick spent one week with the entire family, seeing basically what Hollis was all about, what was her family like, and I think that right then and there, that solidified that, oh, Hollis is something special. Yeah! We're seeing here a very gifted golfer who doesn't mind letting you know that she enjoys herself. And that's always a refreshing sight to me. Hollis's passion for golf, honestly, I don't know where it comes from. People would ask, what's it like being Hollis Stacy's little sister? And honestly, I wouldn't know any different. I'm extremely proud of Hollis, not for so much of the fact that she's won so many tournaments. I'm proud that she's getting into the World Golf Hall of Fame, but I'm mostly proud because she's a great sister. She made two in a row for the kid from Savannah, one of ten children of Tilly Stacy, a remarkable woman, her mother. She's been with her every step of the way. Hollis Stacy has done it again, and congratulations to her. If you thought growing up in a family of 10 children was chaotic and competitive, you thought correctly. We competed for our parents' attention, hot water, showers, and even a place at the kitchen counter to eat dinner. We never took anything for granted, and we never gave each other any slack. I remember when Hollis called to tell me that she got into the World Golf Hall of Fame. One, you want to cry because you're so proud. And then second, you're thinking, wow, this is really huge. Then she's like, well, now you can't tell anyone until they make an announcement. So, of course, I called my husband <laughs> to tell him. It's an honor for me to represent my family, my brothers, Gil and Tommy, my sisters, Laurie, Jean, Mary, Ann, and Amy, my mother, Tilly, at such a special time in our sister's life. Congratulations to Hollis Stacy, the champ of Savannah GA, winning her third United States Women's Open here at the Salem Country Club. When our family looks at Hollis, we see a different person than most other people see. We see a sister who does not look for attention, but likes to share it with others. We see a sister who is passionate about her beliefs, but is respectful of others. We see a daughter who is thrilled that her mother is here to share this moment with her being inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame, but sadly misses her dad and brother. We see a woman who, as a young girl from Savannah, Georgia, believed in dreaming big. <laughs> well, it's such a pleasure to be here tonight. I, um, I said, Martha, did you cry? <laughs> I, uh, oh, it's such a thrill. Uh, thank you, Martha. Thank you, World Golf Hall of Fame Board of Directors. Having my sister present this award to me is so special. I know how much it means to my family. Martha and I are the second pair of sisters to have won national championships. The first being the Curtis sisters 100 years ago.
It's an honor to share the stage with Peter Alice, Dan Jenkins, Sandy Lyle, and Phil Mickelson. And I might add that um, Sandy and I were joking the other day. We are the wallflowers of, the, uh, of, of our class. Special thank you to Honda Motors. Your car saved Jean, my beautiful sister's life, 10 days ago. If not for the side airbags, I would not be here celebrating my career. Thank you, Honda. Thank you. I am here because 13 courageous women had a dream of starting a tour. They formed the LPGA over 60 years ago. I am indebted to those women. Thank you. Donna Orinder, thank you for getting the ball rolling for this day. Congratulations for all your work with Generation W. You will help empower millions of, William, of women. Amy Alcott, you are a true friend for nominating me. I met you when you were 13 years old. I am so proud you helped Gil Hance win the bid for designing the 2016 Olympic golf course in Rio de Janeiro. My hometown of Savannah, Georgia, the coastal empire, from Pooler, where everything is cooler, <laughs> to Tybee Island, to Richmond Hill. You treated a little girl with so much love. The Savannah Golf Club deserves the kindest praise. Your slight restrictions of keeping kids off the golf course allowed John and I to practice our short game together. Our special time together led me to a fantastic short game, which was the secret to my success. Your love and support was always there. Tommy, thank you for letting me play with you. I know you did not like it in the beginning. I was a girl. <laughs> you and John came home glistening with sweat and beaming. I took note and decided to join you too. My early teachers were Matt Warren, Ralph Dillard, Fred Elmgren. Seal McLaurin introduced me to many competitions, and she drove me to the North-South, which I won. Tilly, my mom, took me to Atlanta to work with the late, great Davis Love. Once he said, look who's coming up the ninth hole, and it was Mark and Davis the third. Their bags were bigger than them. <laughs> Mom, did you know you had a lot to do with my golf swing? When I was 10, I had trouble getting over this one hill on number 12. And you told me, swing with this tempo. La, 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 la. And I did that my entire <laughs> career. I know, that was awful. I hate to sing. I did that my entire career. I mean, you know, most of the time it worked. But for women, since we have that lower center of gravity, you know, we have to complete our backswing to the right, then move to the left. You are the reason for my tempo. Jim Faree, Jim Flick, Peter Costas, Mike McGettrick, thank you. John Leach, you know more about the game of golf than anybody I know, plus you love the game. Thank you for making me the player I am today. J.D. Eversberger, thank you. And Elliot Horowitz, thank you for that tip. Just don't swing like me. <laughs> <laughs> I had the finest teachers in the game, no doubt, but the intangible that separated me from others in competition was growing up in a large family. My nine brothers and sisters were my biggest fans fiercest competitors, and best friends. I learned never to let the big things bother me. If you did, you were way up the creek. I learned things don't have to be perfect. You can manage with almost. I learned to live in chaos and handling things not in my control. Gosh, it sounds like I'm playing the last hole of the US Open. <laughs> It's no small wonder why I love the stillness of the golf course. I loved everything about it. I loved the game at an early age, more so. To me, it was heaven on earth. 
I could actually hear myself think. I love the smells, the dew in the morning, the moss in the trees, and the basic richness of the ecosystem of the human cell. A few weeks ago at Generation W, I was asked, what was the defining moment of my career? December 66, Golf World, there was a notice for a USGA Junior Girls event in California that would change my life forever. I sent the entry fee of $2 immediately, <laughs> six months early. I was entry fee number one. <laughs> I met little girls just like me who loved to play golf. After that experience, there were never enough hours in the day, days in the week, weeks in the year to play golf. The following year's event was in Flint, Michigan, the site of the famous playoff. The playoff consisted of Pat Bradley, who had a huge tour bag, <laughs> Bonnie Lauer, Martha Jet McAllister. So there I was with my stick bag, and I wore a half glove. Oh, yes, Pat, you remember it very, yeah. So I proceeded to lose and lose really badly. I never got my four shots off the ground. So I made a vow never to make a fool of myself ever again. I won the next three USGA Junior Girls. Thank you, USGA. Thank you. And the reason why I played so well in USGA events was because we grew up together. When I joined the tour in 74, I had visions of holding trophies, of seeing golfers holding trophies at the end of the week. I learned early, win some, lose a lot. Golfers of every handicap, do not go out there thinking you're going to win right off the bat. Golf mirrors life. We learn by our mistakes, our three putts at the wrong time, our bogey's coming in, that nine at the last. It's all the same. Winning is a result of learning from our mistakes. My favorite place to play in the world was Japan. Marrying those images from my fifth grade geography book and the images on the bus ride to the golf course of Mount Fuji, the rice paddies, the Shinto shrines was unforgettable. One of my funniest experiences in golf was there. Early in the round, I decided I was going to speak Japanese. <laughs> I had won two opens. So when Noriko Yoshikawa missed a putt, I said, Oishi, when I meant to say Oshi. I had to stand near her so, and I, so she could hear me. I'd practice. So rather than saying, I am so sorry you missed that putt, Noriko, I told her when she missed that putt that it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, so, the, so the funnest times for me were trips to Japan, playing with Bonnie Lauer, Debbie Massey, Jan Stevenson. And my special times were in Ibaraki Prefecture. To my friends and fans in Japan, have courage. I continue to pray for you. To my sisters of the LPGA, the wind is in our face. In fact, it's always been in our face. 1,500 miles south from where I stand, $6 billion is being spent to widen the Panama Canal. Most ports east of the Mississippi along the Atlantic and Gulf will eventually be dredged to accommodate the larger ships from Asia. This will help ease the dependence of oil. I see this as a fantastic opportunity for new LPJ events and maybe some PGA events. Our Asian, African, South American, and European LPGA sisters with their enormous fan bases could help support these events. We can help America while we help ourselves. As you have heard, I could have never accomplish anything without all of you. That includes not just my family, but the LPGA, the USGA, the entire golf community, and all my friends. You are all part of my success. Thanks.
Making, making a six-footer to win a major championship takes a lot of courage. I would like to think or hope I had won one thousandth the courage my dad had. My dad was with General Patton's Third Army in the Lorraine Campaign. <sighs> the replacement rate in his unit, the 26th Infantry Yankee Division, was over 500 percent. I know how he lived his life was due to what he experienced in World War II. He certainly loved life, and he certainly lived it to the fullest. <clears throat> I am lucky that Jack and Tilly fell in love. I am luckiest they love the game of golf. I dedicate everything I've done to my family. Thanks.